Hey, how's it going? Let's take a trip to Deanston Distillery. Yeehaw. So as you can see from the video, uh, we cycled to Deanston Distillery, it was me and my dad, we went on the Friday, I was just off two weeks off nights, uh, so I don't know why I done it, it was a bit of torture because I was absolutely knackered, but yeah, we cycled to Deanston from the, the house, so from Falkirk, which is roughly about an hour and a half, two hours, it took us a little bit longer because my dad was a little slower, uh, <laughs> and he was a little bit nervous on, on the, the country roads with um, kind of his cars going past at 60 miles an hour, and they some of them were tending to go quite close, uh, which is a little bit of a shame. I don't really like cycling on roads because of that anyway. I don't like holding up traffic, but yeah, it's, it's, it's a shame not to see them giving us space. Uh, so he decided that he would get picked up. We were originally going for uh, just to go to the cafe because I'd looked online and there was no tours, there was no tastings. 
Uh, so we were just going to go for the cycle and go to the cafe. And uh, at the cafe, he decided to get picked up by my mum. I uh, queried the receptionist if there were or or the person on the till uh, in the shop if there were any tours or tastings. There was a tour at quarter past twelve. It was twelve o'clock. We were just sitting down to lunch, uh, and there was a tasting at two o'clock. So I jumped on the tasting, and because I knew I was going to have whiskies, I decided to uh, also put my bike in my mum's car and get the bus back. Uh, so mum came, picked up dad. Uh, bikes went in the boot and, and they, they hauled off uh, and this was about half twelve so I had a couple, about an hour and a half or so uh, to kill uh, so I walked around the, the Deanston area, there's not much, it's tiny <laughs> uh, sat on the, the grass for a bit, sunbathed, sat on a bench, watched the river it was, it was lovely, quite, quite, quite uh, romantic on my own and yeah I watched, uh, I, I went round and seen some old signs and stuff which was pretty cool uh, for the old owners of Deanston and yeah I really liked the distillery just taking time to kind of take it all in walk around it and that it's a, a, a unique distillery a, a, an old mill converted into a distillery and it's, it's got something really it's quite industrial but quite appealing uh, to, to, I don't know why there's something appealing about it but yeah the, the tasting itself so £35 I believe it cost and you got three cast strength whiskies three casks, uh, three whiskies straight from the cask, all bits in it and everything, so I'll put some pictures up. The first was uh, a, a 13 year old bourbon, which was lovely, it was it was great. Uh, the the bottles were already poured, which is, I've not really got a gripe with, but I would have loved to have seen it, it come straight out of the cask and get poured into your glass, I like that touch. But I think for efficiency and for time, uh, they do it in the morning, they, they, they draw them out and just put them in a bottle. And then pour them on the on the day, which is fair enough. Uh, I can't really complain about that. It's just what I would prefer. <laughs> uh, so the the second was a organic Oloroso, I believe, around 11, 12 year old. It was okay. They were obviously what a showcase their, their organic spirit, uh, the fact that they do organic whiskies, and I'm not sure if organic changes it at all. But I feel like there's there's something with organic whiskies that I just I don't think I enjoy as much for some reason. Uh, I'm not sure if it's just in my head, but this Oloroso one, I didn't think it was up to much. It was okay, it was nice, everybody else enjoyed it, except for me there, sitting with my bloody Whiskey Whims hat on, and uh, yeah, I just for some reason didn't enjoy it that much. I preferred the bourbon, but then came the, the third dram, which was a, a 25 year old single cask, uh, Pedro Jimenez, a fully matured in Pedro uh, Jimenez, and... Yeah, I don't know how the Deanston Distillate stood up to it. It was spectacular. I thought the PX would drown out the, the, the whiskey and be too sickly, too sweet, too much sherry. But somehow, whether it be second fill or, I don't know, a, a more tired cask or what, the Deanston Distillate just held its own perfectly and it was a great whiskey. Uh, £155 for a bottle for a 25-year-old Deanston. That's incredible. Uh, one of the gentleman earlier when we were waiting to do our tasting a gentleman came in from to to the shop and he was like can i get a bottle of this 25 year old and i was thinking that's going to be expensive that's going to be extortionate but the woman said oh we've not got any left it just sold out this morning uh someone else bought three or four bottles and there's me thinking this is going to be about 400 pounds 300 pound a bottle and someone's just bought four bottles and then when i found out it was only 155 pound 155 i realized why people were like going crazy for it. It's a great value for 25 year old and it was a great whiskey. Uh, so if I can find that on the auction, I definitely will. But I won't be paying ridiculous price. I think uh, 180 or something would be as high as I go, maybe 200 because it was a really nice whiskey. Like I said, single cast, uh, fully matured in PX. So that was the tasting. It went by a little quicker than I expected. I think we were there for 40 minutes. Uh, it was advertised 45 to an hour. There's nothing wrong with that, the, the guy himself, Brian, that was taking it was uh, fantastic, good humour. I had a bottle of Deanston uh, rum, Deanston 11 year old finished in a rum cask or matured in a rum cask from Cadenheads and asked him if I could pour him a dram, but obviously because he's working, because of rules and health and safety, he couldn't have a drink, so that was a shame. Um, but yeah, I had that, and yeah, he was he was great, uh, good laugh, got everybody laughing, it was, a lot, it was there was two English... Um, lads, gentlemen, <laughs> folk, and there was a, a couple and a guy, he was kind of third wheeling, it was a bit weird I thought, but fair enough, whatever. 
Um, <laughs> they were American, Australian. I didn't really catch the accent too much. I was still in and out of night shift mode, so I was just kind of sipping away, uh, trying to think what I was tasting. Um, so I was focusing more on the whiskey rather than the others, but that, that was all that was there, so it was quite an intimate, intimate experience. Uh, compared to like the Caden Heads one, it's hard to compare them. You know, the Caden Heads is, is completely different. Uh, six or seven whiskies, 50 pound. Uh, you can be there for hours, they can just sometimes pour you a little bit more and they've obviously got a, a, an array of different whiskies, not just exclusively one distillery. Uh, so it, it, the Deanston tasting was good in its own right and I would recommend that it. it was good. Uh, I would have liked it just to be a little bit longer, like I said, uh, maybe four whiskies or something, even if they put the price up a little bit, because it seemed rather we were in there uh, and you were through the whiskies quite quick, you didn't get enough time to appreciate them. Uh, that there wasn't enough, I, I felt, kind of conversations around them bet between the group uh, and that might have just been the, the people not wanting to speak to me <laughs> Man, and that's fine but uh, I like these experiences as going in, as, a, as a unit, going in as a, as a team and kind of discussing what you get uh, and that, 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 that's just each to their own though um, so then it was the cycle back, uh, the bus back, sorry not the cycle back uh, so I don't know if you know the geography, but the bus is uh, Dune to, to Stirling train station, then Stirling to Falkirk. Uh, the bus like literally just five minutes up the road, uh, I can get on it. So that's pretty good to know <laughs> if I ever want to go to Deanston again. But yeah, the bus um, Dune to Stirling was uh, going through some colourful areas, uh, and there were some colourful people on the bus. I'm only saying colourful would be nice, and so I don't get cancelled or anything, uh, or anybody jumps down my throat. But yeah, I... I mean, I, I speak to all sorts anyway, so uh, I was speaking to the, the colourful lot. Um, and by colourful, I, I, <laughs> I mean junkies. <laughs> yeah, there was a couple junkies on the bus. Uh, they were alright. They seemed a little bit on edge. I think they were on stuff. <laughs> they seemed a little, I mean, I was there day drinking, so uh, they were probably looking at me thinking, look at that alcoholic. But yeah, they, they were a little on edge at first, and uh, they sat down and kind of talked a little bit. They weren't too bad. Junkies in Scotland are usually quite friendly, so... Um, we're kind of lucky in that way, but yeah, that's all I really got to say. I don't know why I'm now still talking about the um, <laughs> the poverty decline of drug use in uh, Scotland. Does that even make sense? Poverty decline or poverty? No, it's more. I don't know what I'm saying. I I'm trying to be uh, political or <laughs> try to be smart. But yeah, that's uh, that's all I really got to say. So I hope you enjoyed the the, the video of the the cycle and my little. Um, discussion or my, my little explanation of it all. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Stuart. This has been Whiskey Whims. I'll see you later.